23rd, the time's about 5.50. Yeah, I'm a little bit of late. I'm a live streamer, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a Christian apologist. And uh, what we do here on the show, Street Apologist Live, is we serve the underserved and we look into the overlooked. And we're going to talk a little bit about today, about, uh, I guess you could kind of say my career up to this point and where we're at now and what we're going to try to do next. So a bit autobiographical. So I was a little bit late getting some stuff together. And uh, this is important going into the new year of 2021. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, give a shout out to Nate2D2, the first comment in the live chat. Let's go! What's up, everybody? Come on in. Tonight's going to be real chill. You know, we usually go, what, like an hour? Let me turn this down a lot. All right, let me turn this down a little bit. I'm just, uh, all right, there we go. I got actually a mild effect on the voice. I kind of like it. Okay, so you know how we do. Urban Hologetics, I'm the host. I got guests a lot of times. Uh, on the channel, we do live events, like when we're out on the street, you know, doing apologetics, hence street apologist. We have videos where we do interviews. Sometimes they're in person, you know, meet somebody at a hotel room when they're coming through Phoenix. Or sometimes I do uh, a guest, you know, through Skype or through, uh, you know, different places, but kind of, you know, the Zoom type thing. And uh, I do live streams. I just kind of talk to y'all. Sometimes I have a guest there, do topics. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to have uh, Adam Coleman on the channel. And we're going to be discussing John Brown. Did I have a book? Oh, I did, but I moved it. Yep, yeah, whatever. John Brown, a Christian Calvinist abolitionist. We're going to discuss him from an apologetics perspective. And uh, Adam has interesting things to say and just kind of have a conversation introducing you to some uh, relevant history in regards to urban apologetics you may or may not know about. And then Wednesday, I'm going to talk to Abu Kamer, and uh, we are going to do a follow-up conversation on DNA. If you remember, we discussed a little bit about genetics um, on uh, the uh, Signs and Wonders channel, me and g -Con. And now myself and Abu are going to do a follow-up casual conversation on genetics. We're not claiming to be experts. We just want to bring some things that... We talked about and bring you resources and, and authors and certain geneticists and papers and findings and apply them to the area of Hebrew Israelism, especially, right? That's kind of what's going on with that. And of course, then uh, what's a, that's Wednesday. So Thursday, Thanksgiving, and Friday's the day after. So ain't nothing popping on either of those days as far as a live stream. I got a couple of premieres I'm going to drop. Saturday, I might live stream, haven't figured it out. And then Sunday night, got a brother Phil Fox on talking about another issue related to. Hebrewism specifically. Hey, Nate two D two just gave in the Streamlabs, and if you saw right there on the channel, a little uh, R two. Uh, I'm sorry, what am I saying? She's a bumblebee. A transformation sequence happens whenever you do that. Uh, you know, I kind of like some nerdy stuff. You see a Transformers poster uh, against there. It's kind of hard to see. It's right above the magic backpack. You can see uh, Captain America, the turtles, BB eight. If you look close. A lightsaber, uh, you know, stuff like that, whatever. So, anyways, my point is, so thank you, Nate. Uh, I'll, try, I'll put that there, and uh, I should pin that, shouldn't I? I'll put the comments above my head like that. And then, anyways. Callum S. How you doing, Callum? Good to see you. The Bill, ABC TV, Vocab Malone. Yes, I am well. Thank you. I I'm, I just made Bumblebee a little bit bigger, Nate, because he's saying, well, you know, why was Bumblebee so small? Isaac Chin says, can you do the Boom Boom Room again? I do plan on reviewing uh, the Boom Boom Room episodes on a live stream, so it's not quite doing the Boom Boom Room, but do, it is doing it. You know, it's having it like on uh, you, on there. You see what I'm saying? Anyways, I'm getting confused. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Jonathan Green, brand new Patreon, by the way. Thanks for joining 
Patreon.com slash uh, vocab uh, Malone. No doubt, uh, Jonathan. And uh, I'm all right with having Bumblebee as my hype, man. Right? Bumblebee is... He's one of the coolest Autobots. He's like the one you'd want for your friend. He's not necessarily one of my favorites. And, you know, there's like I just can't get away from how cool Soundwave is, you know? Like, how are you going to really uh, beat, you know, Soundwave? You just, you just can't. Soundwave, superior, Decepticons, inferior. Oh, wait, what's he say? No. Soundwave, superior, Constructicons, inferior. You know, he talks kind of like that, but, you know, anyways, yeah. Soundwave, uh, as I got older, I started to like Wheeljack more because he's Italian. <laughs> he's, you know, he's got the Italian colors on his. Anyways, okay, I'm getting off here a little bit. Bumblebee as a Volkswagen or a Camaro? Well, the Volkswagen is more classic, no doubt about that. But that black and yellow Camaro, if you're going to switch his mode, it's not a bad choice, I must say. It's not a bad choice. So I think what I like, Andrew, I like when they do both. Like I and I, I like when um, you know, they They'll have him, and then maybe at the end, he's something else, and then, you know, it's coming. Like, But I like when he, I like, but I mean, it's hard not to go with the classic, but they didn't make a bad choice. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Aaron Larson? How you doing? All right. Uh, okay, you guys are totally getting me distracted here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we are going to, uh... wait, there's going to be a fifth Ninja Turtle? I didn't know that. I mean, I think franchises have to evolve. Four is kind of complete and perfect, but it makes sense. You know, season two of the Thundercats, they started bringing other Thundercats. You know? So, I'm like this. As long as you are true to the spirit and the general aesthetic of the original material, I'm for uh, faithful updates. I'm not for stuff that destroys what went before. I like stuff that builds and modernizes what went before. So I'm not a purist in a way a lot of uh, nerds are. Hey, d -new. <laughs> Thank you for the Streamlabs. By the way, so the way you do that again is streamlabs.com slash vocab. That is where we have our tip jar now. And uh, that's how things work because we don't have super chats. And it's been actually going really great uh, on that. Now, let me let me start from the front. You know, kind of like, uh, what is it, uh, Columbo? Hey, Mr. Phil Fox. Okay, see, I got totally interrupted. <laughs> thank you for the thank you for the love, my man. Phil Fox, actually, he is going to be on the channel Sunday night, and him and I are going to discuss the Seminoles and related uh, Native American tribes originating out of Florida and the claim by one West, not all, but one West Hebrews lights on their 12 tribes chart, that the Seminoles are the tribe of Reuben. Him and I have discussed Gad, very introductory conversation, the GAD claim in relationship to Native Americans in general. And, of course, you guys should know um, Phil Fox represents First Peoples, you know what I'm saying, in the sense that he is one. Uh, and so shout out to him and uh, those that he, uh, you know, saying works with and serves in the community. And so we're going to discuss that because he has insight that I do not have, and I appreciate that. So we're going to talk Sunday night about the Seminoles. I think that should be good. Um, again, not claiming to be experts, you know, everything you're, you're constantly learning, hopefully, you know, but uh, we'll get there. Okay, so what's the deal? The title with the thumbnail is a little bit of clickbait. I already know what uh, enemies, people who are not fans of, of me are going to say. Based on, oh, we got him. He's tired out. He needs a break. Right. Look, everybody's just a human. Thing to do. That's true. Hey, JP Davis, thank you. For the Streamlabs uh, donation, let me give you a round of <laughs> shout out to you, my man. You guys are, are working off that freestyle dead, uh, no doubt, man. Okay, well, I don't know what's going on here, Paul P. A uh, Grimlock, you know, they have done some really interesting things with Grimlock in the comics, especially, but Grimlock is an interesting character uh, because he can be deceptively intelligent in some ways. And so he has this, like, primitive nature, 
but I like when they explore sort of the the crafty aspect of how Grimlock can be deceptively intelligent at times. I like that aspect um, of him uh, that they have in relationship to to him, and almost the struggle he has with like his primal instinct as a as a good guy, you know, Dinobot. But Grimlock is actually uh, fascinating, and he's just dope. I mean, he's a T Rex. He has great lines. He has a great sense of humor, right? Uh, Grimlock probably has the best sense of humor out of all the Autobots, I'd have to say. So you guys got some good choices. I, I you know, I, I got something to say about all these guys, you know, different uh, issues and opinions on all. I don't like when they play Grimlock as an animal. Like, I don't like when they do that just strictly as an animal. That is not the Grimlock uh, I'm interested in, you know. Me, Grimlock King! Hold on, no, wait a minute. Me, Grimlock King! <laughs> uh, we're going to get into it. Hold on. Excuse me, I know there's a little bit of a sound there. So, here's the deal. I do need a break. But when I say a break, what I'm talking about is a break to transition. When I'm saying break, what I mean by that, all right, is a break to do something else. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. <laughs> Apparently, we've got a whole Transformers conversation beginning Ironhide was always one of my favorite Autobots. Danny D, you, I don't know if you knew this. The same uh, <clears throat> voice actor in the original series, Peter Callum, voiced both Ironhide and Optimus Prime. Ironhide is basically Optimus Prime with a Texas draw or something like that. You know, a lot more John Wayne in there. Uh, Optimus Prime is already John Wayne, but they go John Wave like all out Texas. And that's what Ironhide is. We're going to bust some Decepticrap, Decepticreeps. We're going to bust some Decepta chaps. Aaron Larson with the classic line, Vocab Malone at the Spanish Inquisition. Hey, I didn't expect the Spanish Inquisition. Well, Aaron, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Okay. Oh, he doesn't get the joke. Uh, Spanish Inquisition, it's a, it's a reference to uh, Monty Python troop. It's, it seems like you would have already received that by now. Oh. Isaac Chin says he doesn't care about Transformers. <laughs> well, brother, don't you need, you know you need to be transformed by Christ? Ha! You better care. <laughs> okay, so here's what I mean by break. I need a break to write. I have realized, hey, let's time out Isaac Chin. He's being a hater. Go ahead and time out Isaac Chin. If you don't like the vibe of the show, the way it begins, you're probably not going to like me. I'm sorry. It is what it is. But let's time out Isaac Chin. Come back with a better attitude. Go to the corner and think about what you've done, okay? And ask yourself, is it really worth being that grumpy? Is it really worth being that grumpy? I don't think it is. So come back and enjoy every moment of your life, you know? And uh, we'll be glad to see you, hopefully, with a transformed attitude. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and actually block the live chat. I don't mean block you, but I mean put you guys where I can't see you because I'm never going to get to what I need to talk about here if I could keep on seeing you guys with all these clever comments. So I'm sorry. It is what it is. All right. Dino's got it anyway. We're, we're cool. Um, so I wrote a book on Hebrew Israelites in um, 20... Oh, she's 2017. It's published in 2017. Okay. And... Uh, the impetus of it is I was uh, going to speak at Thriving, Thriving Frequency in Philadelphia in 2017 on Hebrew Israelites. And two of the people there who were uh, associated with Epiphany said, look, you need to come with something. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you need to have some material, some content, some product like that people can sink their teeth into. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, not just a talk. You really need to do this. And after talking to them, I... I realized they were right. They kind of lit a fire underneath me. So they were, I owe a lot to Pastor Mason and, uh, and Pastor Ernest, Ernest Cleo. Uh, to, he's in Camden, Jersey, and of course, uh, Pastor Mason's in Philly. Because it wasn't happening otherwise. Those two men uh, lit a fire underneath my butt in a very friendly, just beautiful way. They probably don't even remember. So I basically locked myself away. And got to writing something I already had. I had work in... Here's a short version. Um, there is components of a, of a written work already in the work because I'd begun my 
doctoral project. So I had this skeleton outline. And so I took the beginning parts of that and turned it into a lay level book. So I changed the tone of it from more academic and dry to uh, for the grandma on the pew flavor. Okay. And so if you're like, oh, that was a doctoral project. How was it? No, I, I, I used the outlines and the basic beginning ideas. But then that was only for the first half of the book, really, uh, maybe even the first quarter. And then the rest uh, was kind of fresh, but but that's that's what happened with that. And so the book is called Barack Obama versus the Black Hebrews Lights: Introduction to the History and Beliefs of One West Hebrew Islamism, 2017, uh, self-published, independent. You know how that goes. And uh, my homie Nate Shear did the cover. Mike Williams helped out with the layout and stuff. There are some mistakes. The Kindle layout I've never been happy with. Uh, I found I, I, everything was set and then made some changes, and the last minute changes brought in mistakes. It's just how things go, and just oh man. Doing a book is, is hard. It's a lot of work. And that's what I, I saw at the time. Um, I had uh, some some church friends who were able to dedicate time to those times where I had to be locked away. They basically could do things like take care of the dog and, and just life things. You know what I mean? Because I, I work a job. So writing takes everything out of me. I'm not, I can't just turn, turn it out quickly. I can if I'm dedicated and locked away, but I don't really type. I hunt and peck even at this age. I know it's sad. So I got, I have limiting factors. I'm not the perfect person to be writing books, but with that being said, uh, these people at the time, uh, Hey, AJ Chu, thank you very much for that. I'm gonna give you the air horn. Shout out to you, bro. And uh, Bumblebee's in the house. So what it is, is I realized, um, the only way that book got completed, it was in the nick of time. And when I say in the nick of time, I mean the nick of time. And I never wanted to do that again, although I probably would. Um, but I realized if I'm going to ever write a book again, I'm going to need to do something similar. Because at that time, I didn't have the steadiness of the of the YouTube channel in the way I do now. So I didn't have to maintain that ministry, that online presence in that way. It wasn't part of what I was doing in the same way that I am now. YouTube.com slash full capital. By the way, all you guys should be subscribing. And have hit the bell. I think only 25% of subs have hit that bell. You need hit the bell that says for all. It doesn't cost you a thing. Just please, it helps. So um, that came out, and it was very introductory, very basic book. But there uh, were unique aspects to it that made it timely. Okay, People have complained about the title. I did do the title on purpose. Okay, I, it's, it's not an accident. I knew it would stick in some people's crawl, as they say. I, I knew that. But I was just willing to have a memorable title. I didn't want it to be Introduction to Hebrew Israelites. Or, you know what I mean? I wanted it to be something like, well, wait, what? And kind of unsightly, like this big clunky thing. I did that on purpose. It was almost like, wait, 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 wait. Because a hardcore conservative is like, is this a book about Obama? I, I got to you know. <laughs> so they didn't, they weren't fans of it. And uh, then other people were like, well, what are you trying to, <laughs> anyways. But I knew it was going to be, introductory and so i have this idea for a bigger expansion of this book and so i am already working on a second book and i uh, tentatively been calling it do your research but i'm pretty sure that title is going to change as i've been going through this i'm pretty sure i have not really fully decided if it's really the expanded version of this or what it really is is um you know actually like basically a new book like this is the introduction that's the sequel i think i'm leaning more towards that's the sequel it's going to be thicker more dense uh more heavy more more detailed i don't know if i always said that just more intense is what it's looking like so far and so it's going to also kind of take more work because of the the way it is i'm not saying it's an academic treatise okay I'm still writing for um informed somewhat informed christians who care about these issues but I have a basic, most most of the time, high school education. That's that's basically who I'm writing for. Uh, now, some people may say, "Well, you know, whatever." But uh, that's 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 the main, the main audience is for people who need to get formed, okay, and on on these issues. <clears throat> but look, now this channel, I'm live streaming all the time. I don't know any any other way to do things other than to go all out, and I'm putting up premieres all the time, and I'm just pushing it. You know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to fit in some writing. And then I'm tired, and then I'm working on a thumbnail. There's just no way. It's So I've realized there's no way I can 
do all the stuff online from Instagram to Facebook to YouTube and write. I have to do something different or it's never going to happen. Because I was kind of waiting to see if there's ways it could kind of creep in there and gradually. And after toying around with minor changes, it's not possible. I have to set aside the time. I need a break from online presence. I need to delete my apps, a lot of the apps on my phone. I need to um, to not live stream uh, a lot. Every live stream, even where I don't have PowerPoints and pictures and stuff, takes a lot of preparation and energy and effort. Every single one. Even the ones where I forget to tag things and stuff and don't have metadata. It's like crazy. I'm not even <laughs> doing everything right. And it's still, we're talking intense, you know? So because of that, I were like, okay, something's got to change. I've got to cut back beginning in December. So this next week of live streaming will be the last diet of live streaming like that after that. Then I may go live, say, maybe once a month, perhaps. And here's the thing, though. I don't know yet. Depends on the progress of the book. And I don't think I'm probably going to get a lot accomplished in December. It's going to be like a transition month because of the way my job is in December and the way life is in December, family and stuff like that. My guess is it won't be a lot accomplished, but it'll be a transition to kind of weaning off uh, these type of things and then moving on into the writing phase because it's a different mindset. You're doing different. It's, it's, it's a different thing. I would have to lock myself away for two to eight hours all every all, like, like all the time to get this accomplished. Right now, I don't have that ability, but I can, I can, I, that can happen if I change the schedule. So, do you guys understand what I'm saying by that so far? So, the transition is to writing. So, if you support this ministry, if you support uh, the importance of this, so what I do, then you'll understand writing is important, needs to happen. It's a pro, pro, important part of the con, theological contribution, right? Uh, the physical book with the information and the truth, right? That's got to happen. Everyone's not on YouTube. Everyone's not going to watch videos, and we may not always be on YouTube. Something else has to happen. But guess what? It's not just one book. I just told you about the Hebrews Light Follow-Up book, but the way it worked out is I realized the front of the book was all about urban apologetics and stuff. <clears throat> and I felt it was important, but I also felt like it was weighing the book down. So what I'm toying with right now is actually a book before that, a small, almost booklet, maybe around the size of this or smaller, about urban apologetics, ostensibly called perhaps Doctor for the Block. We'll see. Uh, just some basic things. Adam Coleman has contributed some to that, and uh, I'm still letting it shape up and whatnot, okay? So actually, it's two. It's not one. Because I feel like there's some things I need to, kind of need to establish as far as issues and methodologies, uh, but I don't feel like it should belong all in that book. But it So there it is. So that's kind of happening. And that actually is further along because it's less to organize and it's an easier tone. <clears throat> so that's what's happening with those. But I've got to take time. And I may even need to go all the way into the spring of this. So if you are just judging what I'm doing simply by video output, then you might be disappointed because you're not going to see it live. Or my personal social media stuff, you'll be disappointed. <clears throat> because it's not going to be that as much because I've got to write. I've got to ghost y'all in some ways to make this happen. I've got to put myself in an extra lockdown. And you know what? I think it's actually, it's perfect timing. It's good timing. Everything's locked down anyway, right? And just go at it, right? Okay, now with that being said, I am working on a contingency. That's not really what it is. A parallel plan. Will it happen or not? I don't know with a couple of people where they essentially take over the running of the channel. You may say, but I thought you weren't doing anything. Well, here's what I'm working on. I am working on getting uploads so there can be regular premieres, but I don't want to be involved with them at all, or should I say very little. So the editor does it. I may not be able to check it, and it comes out, and the editor actually puts it up, and there's two editors. One is a volunteer. One I've tried to set aside a little bit of money to where I can pay an editor again. It's not going to be like before, okay? We're talking a smaller amount, smaller output, but for something, because I think it's important, <clears throat> Bry from the Shy. So I'm working on Bry from the Shy, putting out some stuff as premieres, and then another volunteer who uh, likes to have their identity hidden, basically. And I respect that, you know what I'm saying? But they, they've been a great help. They've done, like, the How to Debate, like, a Hebrew's Light, uh, the Hebrew Hopscotch video, 
the uh, wait no that was Mike I think that was comment Mike the uh, twelve tribe chart video if you remember these um, really good stuff the Christ myth videos those ones okay <clears throat> so D knew actually I haven't talked to her but she may also be kind of fundamental to this because she does a lot of the indexes and cards and I know she already does a lot I'm afraid to ask her to do more but I'm probably gonna ask her basically can you help coordinate to an extent with these editors and if you can't I'll, I'll, I'll fit we'll figure it out okay I, you know I'm, I know you're here and I'm kind of just throwing this out I'm so sorry to say uh can you basically set the premieres and here's the instructions pick an open day and set it at one o'clock that's it because if you notice Liza J and Andrea Cruz have created so many clips there's just a bunch of videos these are kind of vignettes so kind of gorilla style that go almost to the end of the year so that's taken care of so we are working on now videos to be there for January, February, March. So the point is the channel will still be active because I, I think the impor the platform is important and it has my name on it. But really, there is a certain sense in which I take responsibility, but I don't view it as just mine. That's why I like to premiere videos by Caldwell, Apologetics, and Faithful to God, and Abu, and uh, get people shine like that, you know, uh, that deserve it and are really good. Uh, in thy word, the brother Israel, that's his name out there in the UK, remember? So I'll show you in five minutes. So hey, this Hebrews like breakdown is wrong, brothers. Yeah, he's a great guy. <laughs> That's not really a good impersonation. He's a great guy though. He does good work. So highlighting their stuff. So this isn't leaving Hebrewism. Some of you may say, ah, because I look at analytics and I see most of the videos that most of you guys watch are videos on Islam. Not all, but a large percentage of the other videos that you watchers of this channel watch. Guess what they are? They're videos on Islam. What that lets me know is the other subjects most of you guys are interested in actually is Islam, not the Hebrew Islam. Now, some of you are, and you're there. Um, I get it. Some of you basically trusted me and come along for the ride. But I hope you keep on trusting me. This thing is important. This thing is big. I try to explain it. I don't think people understand urgency and the crisis of the situation we're in. And it's difficult to kind of constantly go over that because I just want to get into the information and stuff. But, man, this is serious. It's just, there's so much serious here. And so, from Patreon to PayPal to Cash App to Subscribestar, you guys have made a massive difference and helped things go. It's not easy. It's almost, there's be some real challenges associated with this work. And I'm a very flawed individual. So, you know, you never feel worthy for this. And you're like, ah, man, it's, t it's tough, you know. It is, there's a lot of tough things to it. But what's going on is prioritizing. There's a time and a season. So, uh, hypothetically, the idea is coming back, right, to continue to do stuff, um, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, videos and live streaming after the books are done and completed, but I want to make them priority. Now, the, prop, the thing is, can vocab stay away, meaning, you know, I enjoy live streaming, I enjoy talking to you guys, uh, I love the community stuff, so... The, some of that's going to switch over mainly to Patreon people. Like we're going to do some, st we're still going to do our hangouts is my plan, and sort of more of the private stuff. I think my, I'll limit sort of my stuff to communicating with the with the kind of interior uh, circle, you know, the homies, the core, as far as main things go. I think that's that's what the hope or plan is, right? And um, with that, like, just understanding um, that you guys are very, very important to this. You know, it just doesn't happen unless it's a community effort. It doesn't happen unless it's a group. You know, it's never just one person. You may see one person or a group of people, but it's always a it's a team. I need some water. This is bad. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Now, I'm going to look at the live chat and see if you guys have any questions. I think I've explained everything. I always leave out something. Here. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate that. Uh, I was never in a cult. And no, I'm not a Hebrew Israelite. Oh, oh, they're asking you, Jonathan Green. Oh, I'm sorry. Who is Tone Spain? The topic Uncle Jace is um, uh, working on uh, a couple of books, the new books. Hey, hey, how you doing, K Soko? Sorry, I think I need to get back with you. I'm so sorry. Oh. Uh, is he still trolling, Dino? Red Pill saying, I see you. What is the dark side? Well, what does that mean? Oh, the uh, UK accent. Tell us your true fears, vocab. You know I know. Tell the rest of the people. 
Hebrews lights, the handy dandy psychoanalysts of YouTube. Brother, uh, I I wouldn't tell my fears to you uh, because I don't trust you at all. And uh, my fears are, are unbiblical anyway because the Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. The, one of the main commands in the Bible is do not fear. Thou shalt not fear. And I try to work on that, you know. And no one's perfect, but that's what's up. Just want to see if vocab teaches the RFID like one was. No, I do not teach the RFID chip. Like one West. I do not believe that that's what it is. Chris Wiggins says, taking a break from pushing your beliefs on others. Uh, uh, well, interesting way to put it. Um, nobody has to watch any of these videos. You know, it's not like it's forced. You know, it's not like the YouTube album that, uh, you know, <laughs> iTunes put on there. Yeah, I do need to. Drink a lot of water, Timothy says. You should take a vacation. I'm not trying to take a vacation. That's not what it's about. When I say lock myself, I'm 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 speaking sort of with hyperbole there. Okay. Uh, like the book huge. Doctor for the Black. <clears throat> I wrote a book. I think you can check it out. Might give you some ideas. Gabe Smith, watching on Facebook. I would love to uh, check out your book. Uh, can you get me that or a link or what? What's up? What can you do? What can you do? Hey, thank you, Timothy. Appreciate that. Yes, Isaac. I well, I like more geek culture. I'm not a big superhero guy, actually. Oh, hey, great idea, Nate. Yeah, there is a research uh, wish list on Amazon there. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Linen. What do you guys say? Hey, I like that, actually, Grace Maid. Huh? Eh? Eh? Yeah, it does, right? Okay. I am, Nate. Hey, what's up, Miss Tidy 2? Everyone, please subscribe to her channel. She has great material. You don't want to miss out on. So does MJ Jackson in the house. That's my brother right there. Definitely do the same thing there. All right. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I think I went through. Hey, Alicia. Uh, thank you for all your support. You've been really great, you and uh, your family. So shout out to you on that. Uh, that's not a bad title, Grace Made. Although Ron uh, Rhodes might have that copy written or something, you know. Uh, okay, so what's up? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now. My fear, my fear is to be a nothing. <laughs> you guys cracked me up, man. Well, I have one. Someone, can someone drop the link for my first book, please? Because there is one. I'm talking about the next stage, you know? Tone Spain. I don't remember if I heard of him. No, I am not a pastor or deacon. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm just a dude. Okay. Now, let me say this. All right. Oh, Rosario. We're going to have to time you out. You're not being very nice, okay? Um, I like your name. You seem like good people, but... Come back with, with less of a temper, okay? You don't want to be threatening other people in the live chat. Thank you, Abu. Appreciate that. Yeah, Nate is fat. Hey, Raphael says, I just watched Islamicize Me. Well, you're a brand new man now after that. <laughs> okay, so check this out. Um, when I do go live every now and then, I'm going to try something, if I can, that may not work, okay? All right. Our friends at Facebook have been reaching out to me. When I say reaching out to me, I don't mean they've been DMing me private messages, but they're doing this with a number of people. They're saying, hey, you qualify to make some paid event videos. Well, we know YouTube has demonetized a bunch of us, including me. And now you got Facebook trying to snipe away some of the creators. I don't know. But Facebook has been hitting me up saying, you can create an event 
that basically creates a situation where people... Hey, thank you, Hope Defense. Appreciate that. See, that's good. This is what we need. So see, uh, the comment on the screen, that's important. That's important, and that's why that's why, that's why why I got to do this, guys. Uh, I heard about it. I haven't watched it. Grace made. Okay. So here's the deal. Facebook has been reaching out to me talking about, yo, uh, you qualify to uh, do these paid events. Now, I don't like the Facebook setup with live streaming and videos as much, okay? And I never have very much success on there. We have a low amount of... We do have people watching on Facebook right now, but it's always a lower amount, okay? And, uh, you know, that, that it, is, it is what it is. Now, here's the thing, though. They're kind of enticing me a little bit. You know, they're, they're kind of enticing me a little bit, and they're kind of getting me interested. They are tempting me, and I may give in. They're making a compelling case. Now, it's a little different, though. What it is, you set up an event, and to get into the event, everyone essentially pays an admission to get in. The ones I've seen are around four ninety nine. A lot of the events are around four ninety nine. That seems to be a common entry price point. I've seen some that are a little higher, some that are a little lower, but I've seen a lot of four ninety nine. I have not totally researched this yet. I don't know a lot about it. I am going to try it though. So my point is, next time I live stream, it may be via this Facebook event thing. Now, how would that tie in with um, stuff on YouTube? I don't know if I can do both at once. We're going to find out. I'm going to figure it out. But I may be just trying it. And I know some people are like, ah, but look. And some of you won't come because, you know, it's like, I'm not going to come. Like a show like this, I wouldn't do as a paid event. You know what I mean? Uh, because it's a very casual conversation. This is not something. But when I'm doing kind of a presentation or an important interview, Maybe. Now, some of you are like, ah, what? Look, I've got so much free content on there. I think I've got over a 1,000 videos. Uh, so it's not like I haven't put out stuff. It's not like I'm in stingy, okay? Come on, guys. So I may. I, I'm, I'm debating with it, okay? Uh, Liza J! Woo! That was pretty cool. How you just did that Shitara gif or whatever. I didn't know you could do that. Did you guys see that? That was cool. Some of you guys didn't see it because it was so fast. But right? <laughs> so look. Now oh, you guys are funny. Everyone's got a hey, what's up? Guadalupe Baravino. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Grace Media, I hear I hear you. Understand the hiatus is just hiatus from live streaming. But what I'm gonna do now is freestyle a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is tell you a little bit about uh what's come before this to see if uh you know it makes sense what I'm doing. And kind of how I personally arrived to this point. And you'll see what I'm saying here in a second. But let's freestyle real quick before I do that, okay? Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yo. Effects. Here we go. Let me rewind that joint. Jonathan Soko B. Let's go. Vocab, talking about my dad at the pad in Pickering tent. It's vocab Malone, serve like Wimbledon. Tennis, call me menace, like Dennis. I win this, hit the Venice, it, Italy. Vocab Malone, I be kicking the ball like Pele. What you say, hey, Willie Mays, a hey, best back in the day with the basket finger. Catch, unlatch, I got the style that is rat, ratchet, rapid when I tap it like Sammy Davis in case you ask it. Gonna rap for the Lord till I hit the casket. Check it out now, I got a basket, a basket of Italian bread from the head when I rap. I check it, you can quote what I said, the P and O in the background. If you got an attitude, sit back. 
down, getting fat now, like Fat Albert. It's vocabulary, got the flavor like Sherbert. Cubert, bouncing up and down the square. From Union Square all the way to there. Rare, compare, I dare, contraire, my frere. Ooh. I stare at the whack MC coming after me with my telepathy. Check it out, B, what you see, D, do coming through, Nate 2, D2, crew 2, I rock the microphone, check it, I vocabulary, on, I got to wreck it, I adolescent, been past that, got a crescent moon, I see that from Islam, the bomb, check it out, now my mom is not reading the Quran, she is Sicilian. Peep this vocab Malone. Got the uniqueness. Freak this beat. I'm rocking again. Pull the plug. I'm shocking again. I'm not mocking men, but I'm dropping the men. Then I'm sealing on topping again. On the top like a cherry on a soda. Peep this out. Got the wisdom like Yoda. Meet the quota in my folder. Got the rhymes heavy like a boulder. On the shoulder is a feeler jacket. Grab the microphone, then I got to knack it. Got to snack it, cause I eat up the beat. It's vocab Malone. I will not repeat. I will not repeat. I will not repeat, I will not repeat, I will not repeat. Check it out now, you cannot defeat. It's vocab Malone, the style's unique. Freestyle from the top of the head. Do this till I'm old and dead, or till I get um dementia. Is that what it's called? Did I mention the brain aneurysm I had last night? Just get it on, boy. Now that ain't right. They say, is he white? Is he brown? Is he down? What's up? Check it out now. Give him a pound. He's been around, around. Like a circle, fall off the beat, call me Urkel. Did I do that with the ill type of rap? Got the bar upon my hat, and I got the bar upon the boom bat. I got the bar on top with the cat and the dog in the back, junk off the sofa. Peep this out now, call me Red Rover. Coming right over, I will not clone ya. Vocab Malone from here to Apollonia, put it on ya. We gonna destroy this, yes. Deep. I got the joy kid, joyful noise like the flame collab. Check this first name, vocab, no drag, no cigarette, mic check, chia pet. Here I come again with the alphabet. That's my best friend, 26 of them. You know we got the W going to win, not for West Side. My pride is like a lion, lion. I ride for a tribe called Quest, cause the beat was fresh, but where did it go? I deliver funky rhymes like UPS one more then we'll come back and I got to explore what we gonna do here we come now let me yes y'all I got the dialogue Travis says there's a big red dog in the house sitting on the couch yes indeed I saw him out the door Clifford on the floor Rock the mic like a road warrior Jonathan Green in the room He says straight boom Consume like eating too much Got that touch, call me Tony Touch Chris Wiggins, one, two, three, four He says let it slide, he says let it flow, let it go Oh, yes indeed Isaac, peep this, I read your comment, gotta be honest, this is freestyle rap, haven't you heard of it, of it, now I got to love it, the dude says your beliefs, you shove it, straight down my throat, indeed what I quote, this is a freestyle, no I didn't wrote, yes indeed, now I got the dope, it's the antidote, and I go to a moat, then I conquer the whole castle, vocab Malone, Mike, Mike, take the Tobacco, oh, Eddie Haskell, annoying you. Peep the sound, maybe destroying you. Yes, indeed, on this date, Daniel says, I never hesitate, gotta gain weight, cause the raps are so fat, gotta regurgitate what I ate in my hat, or maybe a paper bag when I drag like a dragon. Here I come again, now I'm rapping, slapping. Like in VeggieTales, remember that one episode where they slap people with fish? The Joan and the Well thing? Remember? They slap people with fish! Just like that. Oh! Okay, let's do this here. Let's let's do this here. Check this out, everybody. We're back. 
I spilled some stuff. I don't... Oh, I'm having trouble. It's acting funny. Oh, man. Lord. Life, man. <laughs> Check this out. What I wanted to do is show you guys um, what's happened now. Because... <clears throat> I want to give you some sense of my involvement with ministry up until this point and where God has brought brought us now. So this is a bit autobiographical, okay? And sometimes I can be a little disjointed. It's going to be a little stream of conscious. Although I do have some visual aids. All right. Uh, let's start with this. Okay. I was uh, young and... Uh, Late high school, about to go into junior college, I think, is about the time here. And I had to really look at whether I was going to go all out for <clears throat> uh, the Lord or not. So it's a big question. Is it true? So I spent a, one summer going through everything I could in relationship to Uh, apologetics on one specific area, creation apologetics. Because to me, evolution was a big issue. Science was a big issue, and it's compatibility with the Bible. And so the main thing I focus on uh, this summer, you know, I was a kid. There was, the internet was just now coming around, you know, was just now coming around. So you couldn't jump online. You had to have books. Fortunately, I had someone who was uh, a caring person who let me borrow all their books on well, actually, a couple people, books and videos, actually, VHS tapes, on issues related to creation, apologetic issues. Now, some people don't like these organizations, but I love them, so it is what it is. Um, answers in Genesis, but they weren't... It was it was more so the kind of beginning parts of that. It was more so Institute for Creation Research was some of the main things, right? And <clears throat> I really did a deep dive. And at the end, I was more certain than ever, and it was really the way the Lord had used apologetics. And right around then, and I'd be, I'd be honest, I, I lose track of sort of where before or after, okay? I, it's a little tricky to tell or kind of deering. I was also, I tried to read a scripture, and so I, I, um, even though I wasn't, you know, hardcore with the Lord the way I should have been, I was still trying to be in my Bible uh, at this time in my life. And... Um, I don't know how it ended up in certain books, but I was in Ecclesiastes. And I had no idea a book like that was in the Bible. I almost like felt like it was a trick. Like, how did this get in here? And I felt humbled because all the stuff that he was saying, I had, a lot of the stuff he was saying, I had thought about, and I kind of was arrogant. I thought I was the only one almost. Not really, but I, I, I was in a lower income area. You know, deep thinking wasn't... Uh, Sort of on the on the menu or on the table. Now there's some exceptions. Don't get me wrong, but it was kind of like, what are you talking about? What are you doing? You're weird. You know, it just that wasn't part of what you did for a lot of a lot of us. So a lot of it I had to kind of keep to myself, right? Except for a few people. And uh, when I got to Ecclesiastes, it rocked my world. And there were some other key books of the Bible, some stuff in Corinthians that Paul had written. I remember one night it made me get up and throw away a large percentage of my secular hip-hop music because I realized how damaging it was. Now, you know, long-term, I think it worked out, and I have a, a healthy view of those kinds of things now. But I realized at that time, you know, the Lord had used certain things in Corinthians to kind of challenge me to grow in holiness, right, and and whatnot. So the Lord is really using His Word along with these apologetic things, and I see them going together just as I look back on it. And by the sort of the end of that summertime— um, I'm not going to say I was a new person or a different person 100%, but I was, I was ready to actually, it was almost accidental. I was like, hey, I, I know this material well enough that I could actually teach it. And I was sort of shocked by that. I, I kind of, I started, I gained enough confidence that I thought that. And also because I knew what the local church I was at. And again, this is not an offense. When you're in a lower middle class area, and so I'm not going to act like it's the worst hood. I'm not going to act like I was from Cambrini Green or something, right? But a lower middle class area, um, this kind of stuff is not really prized for a lot. And so what I saw is that um, 
I could teach people because I realized that they they were smarter, older people. They had wisdom in their own way. But I realized apologetics wasn't really on their menu. It wasn't part of their Christian experience at all. And I understood that, you know what I mean, uh, even as a younger person. So I wasn't going to deal with them in an arrogant way, although I had my moments of arrogance. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I worked with another brother, an older brother named Jonah. And uh, he was like, hey, I've got it set up with pastor and stuff. Uh, let's actually teach a class because I see you've been studying this now. And by, based on our conversations, we could do this together. And I actually remember we uh, remember the old diskettes, the hard ones. I th- what are they? 3.5? Not the floppy disk, but the other. That We put the class on there. We put all our classes. He did half. I did half. And I remember teaching it, giving the handouts to people. And I remember seeing these adults' faces because they were all older than me. I was young. I was barely out of high school and realizing, well, this is important. This is really important because I, I saw them grow, and I saw how hungry they were. They just never had this chance before. And I, I, I literally—I'm oh, a little blurry. I don't know what's going on. There's, there are some issues here. Just keep on letting me know. So, hey, what's up? Everyone subscribe to Servant of Christ Ministries there. I'm going to try to put him on the screen here. It's a good brother right there. And, um— with Ecclesiastes, you know, going back to the Bible side, the Lord just humbled me and brought me to the conclusion it's 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 all or nothing more and more. And then with the combination of the apologetic stuff, I realized how impactful it was for me. And I was like, man, does anybody else, does anyone know this? You know? And in my context, no one knew anything of what we were talking about. But I saw believers who have been, you know, they're, they're 30 years in the faith who would benefit from this stuff and we're interested. Our classes were full. I remember having to go behind people in these chairs to, to do the handouts because there was hardly any room to walk. And I couldn't believe it because the church had never done anything like this. And I was like, whoa, this is important. Like here I am in this, and it was my church. I wasn't some visitor, you know, uh, that was established there. This Lower Miracles Church. I mean, I didn't use those terms, but you know, looking back, this is how I was processing it basically. And everyone is here and they're coming and they're coming week after week. And we did this for like 13 to 16 weeks as class. I said, whoa. And I didn't know about, like, oh, be an apologist. There was no such thing as be an apologist on YouTube. It was just like, I'm going to keep on doing this. But at the same time, I had always been in hip-hop. And one of the things the Lord had to deliver me from at the same time, and this is really all going on in the same over the same couple of years, uh, was idol, uh, idolization of hip-hop. All right? Uh, I, was, I grew up around some gangs and some, you know, we'll call it substance abuse and stuff like that. But I was not into that. Uh, I had other issues and other sins, right? And, uh, of course, one of them was pride and arrogance and things like that. And, uh, you know, having healthy, what's it mean to have a healthy relationship? You know what I'm saying? Especially with people of the opposite sex. To be frank, you know how that goes. I think a lot of you understand those struggles. So they're very rare struggles. But growing up in those areas, I, I didn't struggle with those things, but I did struggle with idolizing hip-hop. It was all I thought about, slept about, dreamed about. It was everything. And I had to come to a realization, and Ecclesiastes helped me to realize you can be the you can be the best guy at the open mic. Because I didn't have dreams of being a millionaire rapper. I had dreams of being one of the dopest, or just basically respected at the local open mic. It was much more small and local, because I would go there, and I saw all these people, and I was like, I want that respect. I want to do this, too. And it was, it was work. And same thing in the graffiti scene I was in. Similar thing, you know, I just you really just want the respect of your local peers in the city. You know, there's these terms, you know, the, the, the king of the line. That's kind of a New York thing because that's to do with trains. But, you know, the king of the city, all city means you've tagged everywhere uh, with hip hop, you know, the title taken. It's not like an official thing. It's just like you beat somebody and and we didn't really take titles like they did in the old school. You know, now you can't use that name anymore. But, you know, that kind of thing. Uh and I realized that was vapid because I saw the way the crowds could turn on you because I was involved with a lot of underground shows and stuff. And I saw how temporary it was. And I saw people who were like the hot underground MCs. I'm talking about very underground, kind of not the Hollywood version, but yes, like 8 Mile. That's most people's only experience to what I'm talking about. 8 Mile is sort of an exaggerated version uh, in a sense. I'm not saying it wasn't real because not many events are like that where you've got this kind of clean shot of a crowd back like that and it's a very concert and they're all hyping into it you know this is a lot more uh raucous and and and, and kind of helter skelter you go into the record shop you know people are coming in there it's getting hot and sweaty 
people come in looking shady. Next thing you know, you're pressed up against a vinyl record, you know, because it's a, literally a record shop. Your your back is against the corner of the glass case where they kept the CDs. You know what I'm saying? And then you you had to literally go to the center of the circle where they were where they were rapping, and you and there was no stage. It was like a, literally a middle of the thing. And everyone's hot and sweaty and very aggressive. And you would have to physically take the mic from the person who finished. This is not, this is, this is real. Now, sometimes they would be done, so they would hand it to the next person. But you had to literally battle through these bodies to get the mic. But anyways, me and the guys wanted respect in those circles. So we started it. So let me show you what I did back then. And the reason is I'm showing you why this break is important and how it all relates to current. And what I'm trying to show you is being very flawed that I am. The Lord has still been very good by God's grace and worked with me and been faithful throughout my throughout my life. And I just want to like tell you guys that or show you that and let you know, like, uh, you know, it's serious what I what I'm doing when I say this. And so nah, I'm trying to hold on. All right, so, oh. Whatever, I'm not even... Uh, okay, I'll show you guys some of this. All right, so let me show you some of this stuff. So I put out tapes. Here's my first tape. I took my student ID at college, and I tagged on it, all right? And so I literally went to Xerox. It wasn't... It, well, uh, Xerox stuff at Kinko's, okay? I went down there at Kinko's, and I was working there. And I never realized till now that the... Um, main guy who worked there because I, I ended up being at Kinko's a lot, a lot because I was doing flyers for hip hop shows. Plus you made your own covers back then. You know what I'm saying? Right. You would literally make your own uh, covers. This is from 1996 people, 1996 people. Okay. Do you understand how old that is? Right. So what happened is, um, uh, I didn't realize the guy at Kinko's, I think, the reason he was so helpful is I kind of realized later, you know, I think that guy might have been interested in me. Oh, boy. I didn't kind of realize I was kind of naive at the time about that. But later on, I realized maybe that's why he was so helpful. But he was very helpful anyways. And, uh, you know, anyways, that was. But so there's that. And then my second album. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, this is my senior year photo. And I just put on an album cover. I kid you not. These are true stories. This is my senior <laughs> class photo that I took that is me as a senior you see the acne and I just put it on there and I called this album old beats and leftover lyrics and you can see that I was rapping by Mal one all right and uh these are cassette tapes you know I feel like I improved this time because I had the sticker but I'm like writing on it and stuff you know then there was a third one and this is where I got the crew involved so this is the prison crew this is all of us right and if you look, it says, you know, featured narrators, Mal One, John Rubin, Vex the Vortex, a documentary on microphone sessions. This album is good. I still sometimes listen to this. I shot this in my backyard. Uh, you can actually see, if you look real close, the clothes, the wire, the power wire. <laughs> That's my neighbor's power wire because I put a microphone in the backyard and took it. <clears throat> yeah, don't tell anybody, though. Uh, so... You know, we, we would do freestyles. We would lock ourselves in a room and freestyle for hours on end. There's uh, me and John Rubin. These are old tapes. I need to transfer one day. Fourth Command, my homie. We would literally just sit around and freestyle for hours on end to get good. And we would battle each other. And uh, <laughs> what are those primitive objects? <laughs> That's good. That's funny. Exactly. You know. Uh, but then what happened is... From there, the Lord got me into radio. So, transition from the tapes into my homie John Rubin, who later got signed to Goatee, put out a CD, and then we tra we kind of transitioned into doing bigger things. Now, he wanted a silhouette kind of cover, but I am on the cover. So, if you look right where it says John that's my face. I have a St. Louis Cardinals ball cap on and a leather jacket like a good Italian should. In the middle there with the fisherman's hat, like the LL Cool J style hat, that is uh, the homie Manny. Manny then, Manuel, uh, part Dominican, part Puerto Rican, the best DJ you've ever seen. And over here, on the, on, over here uh, right there with the hat looking down, you can see uh, on the corner under the word Ruben, that's Oibo. 
and he got his name because his mom was having him, and she was saying, oh, boy, and then it transitioned into, oi, boy, oi, boy, oi, boy, boy, and so they just called him. That's not his real name. And then there's John right there. You see the little curl hair? It's on the very bottom. There, that's John Rubin, all right? And I was actually on the song called Divine Inspiration. See the song called? Number seven. And the, the thing about this was it got radio play. That was such a big deal back then. You have to understand there was no other place. And there was an FM station in town called Radio U. And Divine Inspiration was on there. And that was my camp. That, I, that was the one song I was on. I forget how, what I said. Let me see. The Gift. Yo, I'm giving a presentation. Tracks at John Root. Bo- Tracks that John Root be making. Transcend the Root Boy Haitian. Vocab the Chief's location. Prism identification for the duration of occupation. Place of fat saturation. For the hip hop nation. Salvation's multiplication. Not ample vindication for most gospel radio station. Nor the... I don't remember the rest. But uh, that song and, and, and Transcend the Root Boy Haitian. It was a Haitian dude in our crew. And I said my name vocab. Uh, hey Chris, I'm about to time you out, bro. Don't be hating on my old 90s raps, bro. About to time you out, Chris. It's my old raps, man. Come on, man. I was in high school. All right? <laughs> Not just kidding, man. And then later on, John got signed to Goatee. All right? Are we there yet? Dude blew up, right? He actually thanks me. If you look inside this album, he thanks uh, me. He has a coded way he does it. I'd have to explain it one day. We could do. He thanks me in his first and second albums, both of them, in his own coded way. And, uh, and uh, that was cool because I got to go to Nashville, Tennessee and talk to Goatee. Now, I never met Toby Mack, who was the owner of Goatee, but I met a bunch of other people. I met Grits. I met all of them. Good times. Good times. Uh, the homie Dirk, uh, DJ Mash, whatever, whatever. That's still uh, Toby Mack to DJ to this day, right? And so, uh, Jacqueline, my great-great-grandfather uh, on one side is Sicilian. And so, that's where people would say I have the coloring from. Although I've seen uh, old pictures of great great, but I uh, grandpa and uh, from Sicily, so I never met him. He he was much older, and uh, I think I'm darker than him. Now it's black and white, but I'm pretty sure I'm uh, a little darker. Now this is my COVID color. When I'm outside in the sun, man, I get a little, you know I get a little I get a little you know I can get you know. On the other side, uh, pretty sure German. All right, Zep K Dub, everyone's got to K Dub. K Dub True. All right. So, I, I'm just teasing you, Chris. I'm just teasing you, Chris. I, I'm I'm just teasing you, bro. Nah, nah, faithful remnant. Hey, bro, you about to get booted out of here, bro. That is KJ five two. KJ for a while was doing the John Rubin style. All right. That is not that is not that that song you're talking about is KJ five two. Now he's cool too, and that's Jonas Sorrentino, fellow Sicilian. Cool brother, still doing it today, but that's not John Rubin. All right, I'm just saying. Hey, thanks, Travis. Tan down. I'm saying uh, I, I I I I don't do I would I don't do tans, but I'm saying if I'm outside, you know, I get, I get pretty dark. But uh, you know, this is kind of like my, my light color. Now, what happened is they started um, inviting us into the radio station for interviews. We started freestyling stuff. It was cool times. Good brothers, Roshan Cole and, and, and Pastor Curtis and, and Jason. Shout out to those brothers, you know. I'm still friends with them on Facebook. Well, uh, Radio U basically fired the whole staff of, of, the, of the show, which uh, became called Planet Hip Hop. And what it was weird, what happened is, uh, before they got fired, Roshan invited me in and said, Hey, brother, come over here. Uh, I want you to come in next week without your boys. And I didn't understand. I thought he was like interested in me as an artist, right? I thought he's like, oh, he heard me rapping. I'm the dopest one. I was actually the weakest member of the crew by far, to be frank with you. We had a dope crew. It was like 10 or 11 guys. I was by far the weakest rapper. Well, there's one other guy. He's probably. <laughs> so I um, I was like, okay, yeah. You know, I was arrogant. And we weren't really cool with him. Looking back, we were analyzing him like hip-hop purists. And he said that later. He's like, you guys are watching me like hawks, you know, right? Uh, But he said, look, I don't know what it is, man, but the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, and I just saw something different in you, and, and I invited you here to actually train you how to do the radio show. I said, whoa. Whoa. So Roshan mentored me in radio, and more than that, he was a younger man, but he was older than me, and he had a beautiful wife, a beautiful, beautiful children. He mentored me about what it meant to be a dad, and he was pretty hurt the way they let him go. I don't know the details. There's still mystery there about what happened. And then it wasn't Roshan anymore. 
who my sister is still friends with Rashawn and his family today. Great guy, man. You know, some people in your life you never really get to thank. He's one of them, Rashawn Cole. Pastor Curtis, though, Curtis Harrison, he was stuck around, and he then really mentored me. And at first, I, I didn't respect Curtis the way I should. You know, again, I was arrogant. I respected Rashawn once I got out of my phase. But uh, Curtis mentored me, too. And so I was I was mentored at a younger age by, by a number of, to be frank with you, black men. Not only, okay, I'm not acting like that, but a number of them. And, and you know, that teaches you a lot, you know what I mean? Because you realize uh, it's just, that's a good experience, I think, for people to have. And I, I'm very blessed the way they took an interest in me. And, and uh, if I think about it too long, I'll probably get emotional. <laughs> but... I started learning how to do radio, and then they let Curtis go, and then it was me and Latasha, uh, the co-host, for a while. Well, I got a bunch of old mini-discs where we recorded a lot of our old shows from Radio U, right? And I need to get a mini-disc player one day. If that's something someone needs to even get, how to digitize mini-discs, because I got a bunch of my old radio shows on there, and it's crazy archive material. But the point is, I started to really understand Christian Hop and all this as ministry more and more. But I never left that apologetic stuff in my mind. And that's why if you listen to even some of my oldest stuff, I was trying to put apologetics in there. I just didn't know how to put it all together, but I was trying. We actually had a song called Racism Sucks that was trying to do that. I know it's kind of funny, but... But then I realized I needed to go to Bible college because I was not equipped enough, all right? So, uh, you know, uh, guys... Let me see here. Uh, can I play a beat for you real quick? I need to. I'm gonna grab something. Okay, I need to grab something real quick. I'm sorry. Don't don't don't. Hey, I'll let you guys talk for a little bit here. I need to grab something. Don't don't get mad. Let me, let me play a beat here. I'll be right back. Just give me a second. We're back. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So you see already there's Hebrews lights coming in here, and they don't need to be blocked or anything, but they're like, oh, you're taking a break because you're losing the battle. My point is uh, when I'm sort of offline, you know, hey, you guys got a lot to do. I'm not asking you to, you know, change your whole lives, but you guys don't need to defend, but at the same time, um, if you guys could sort of defend. You know, tell people what's going on, let them know, and uh, uh, just... Uh, uh, explain it and break it down. Don't need to get in any fights, but I'll be relying on you guys during that time. Um, the reason why I'm sharing this, if you're like, how does this connect? I don't know any other way to say it. It's, it, uh, I am, I, I, no human is totally trustworthy because we all fail in sin and have massive failures, some more than others. I think I'm, I'm one of them, you know, the Lord's been very good despite, despite, that and I, I'm, I'm, you know, we're blessed, we're fortunate, we, we we've seen His grace, haven't we? I know I have. My point by saying that is, uh, I'm also trying to show you that there's a track record of of me doing stuff in these in this vein in this capacity that goes back pretty far. And uh, unless the Lord takes me out, I'm gonna be doing this. But there's different phases and transitions, and I'm trying to show you guys that, and hopefully you're like, okay, I get it, this phase, okay. That's why, that's why I'm doing this. To me, it connects. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So I'm doing the radio show, but then I left it all behind because Bible college. 
And uh, I felt, hey, Tony Tabano, Tony Tabano. Thank you for all the support you've always been given, brother. My fellow Sicilian, shout out to you, man. Good people. Um, There were Bible colleges in my area, but I really felt called to go to the specific one in Phoenix, Arizona. Lots of reasons, but a big reason was the amount of hands-on stuff they had you do. I knew it was going to be hard, but it was part of it. It wasn't just the learning in the class. It wasn't just hermeneutics and homiletics. You had to do an insane amount of what are called intern hours, and they had the venues for you to do it. So I have done special people ministry, meaning things with wheelchairs. I have helped. I have operated the wheelchair lift machine in the, in the bus to pick people up for church and services. I've, I've had to take people who are incapacitated in some way to the restroom as part of special, special people ministry. I've had to clean gross things. I've had to uh, be, be an usher. And actually, being an usher is actually harder than you think. I've had to do security. I've had to do um, something called sidewalk Sunday school. Um, I, I did um, other forms of street ministry, um, you know, whatever it is, right? A bunch of stuff during this time in school. But that's how I ended up in Phoenix. So I moved out here, and I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anything. And uh, that was tough. And everyone's like, what are you doing? You've got everything here. And I did. it did seem like I had everything in Columbus. In case you haven't noticed, that's a, the context of the place I'm talking about is Columbus, Ohio. That's where I'm from. And uh, that's true. Uh, hold on, let me see something here. Let me see if we're in here or not. No, no, we're not in here, are we? No, we're not in here. I forgot I already asked. No. I was just trying to see something if we... Huh. That's cool. Just uh, just looking up something. Just trying to see something here. Okay. <clears throat> so. Um, thank you, Brenda. But I went out here, and then just God just opened up doors left and right. And I remember my first show here. I had only been in Phoenix a month, and I already had my first show, and it was better than a lot of the shows I had done in Columbus. And it was like, whoa. And it just continued on like that. And so while I'm doing different things in hip-hop ministry, because I really try to use it as a ministry, you got to understand, uh, there's all these other kinds of doors. And I was learning homiletics and hermeneutics as well. So everything was tying in. And then when I was done, this is a, this is a two-year school. This is a two-year school here. When I was done, I had this uh, associate's degree. Hey, Jonah, what? Jonah, brother, I mentioned you today. I talked about that class we taught way back on creation apologetics. I Actually, this is a rare show where I'm kind of giving people a little history. Brother, I talked about you today. That's bizarre. I don't remember you ever showing up in a live stream. There you are from Facebook coming through. Yeah, Jonah. I actually mentioned the class we did. I don't know if you have any thoughts or memories about back then about the stuff we did together, but if you do, drop it in there. That's cool, man. Maybe you have to check out that part later. <laughs> That's awesome. Jonah was the guy who, like, because he's a pharmacist, so he had more of a science background. Um, really smart brother. So anyways, uh, uh, moving out here, after I was done, my original thought was i got to go back to Columbus. But what happened is... What happened is, I felt obligated. The Lord had opened up so many doors in Phoenix, and even though it was hot and I didn't like that, <laughs> you know, and I didn't, I didn't have a girl like that I had to stay. You know, it wasn't like that. But, but these ministry opportunities that, that were so important, I felt like, and so unique. Um, I had to stay, and I, I told you know people, friends and family, hey, I, I'm done with school, but I think I need to stay out here for a little bit. Well, next thing you know, I did end up with a a family, and that's a I'm gonna essentially kind of skip that because the more information Hebrews lights have, the more they twist and use against you because they're a lot, some of them are sick. But the, I end up staying because a, a family thing did happen, and I'm and and during that time, I will speak on this stuff. Uh, I realized I needed to go back to school, but I didn't really know what exactly. And I was like, it looked like I was gonna be a history teacher. So I did some student teaching, and I went back to school, and I was taking the history classes and the, and the professional teaching classes and whatnot. 
But everything didn't sit right. But I just stayed in the program because what else was I going to do? Well, one day I went to hear Hank Hanegraaff speak because I was still really into the apologetics at that point. And what was cool is the Lord had opened up a door. So this is transitioning less and less hip-hop, more and more into other things, where I got to lead the local uh, Campus Crusade for Christ is what it was called at the time, chapter at, at the college. It was a secular school I was at. And uh, I got to lead the chapter. I wasn't the official staff guy. I was a volunteer leader who was over the chapter, though. And it was an interesting, amazing time. So I learned more there and apologetics and dealing with a lot of Mormons and atheists, whatever, whatever. But I went to this event during that time, talked to someone from Phoenix Seminary, and I could not believe that the way they broke it down is I actually had enough, I actually had enough credits to where I could transfer to go to seminary, which is graduate level work. I could not believe it. I didn't know I would qualify. So, you know, I, I, I talked to them and next thing you know, in 2008, I was in Phoenix Seminary. And then my whole life had changed from going to history and, and all that. And that was really where things began in earnest to where uh, hip-hop and, and that ministry, even though it was important and awesome, I had done it for, you know, 15, 20 years or whatever, right? Um, <clears throat> started taking more and more of a backseat over time. And I learned a lot. And, you know, it was a beautiful experience there. Uh, and... I wouldn't change that for the world. I actually graduated with my Master of Arts. I couldn't believe it. I got the MA. And uh, I did some things involved with local churches at that time, and the Lord showed me a lot there, too. Uh, I also realized that, you know, I am not, I'm not the person to be doing that. Uh, uh, even though I respect people that do do that, a lot of the local church leadership and all that, you know, shout out to, to, to the faithful people who do what they do for the Lord's sheep and, and, and all that. But but you kind of... Sorry, I'm a... No, not on apologetics. Essentially in Bible, it's kind of a long thing to explain, but uh, basically it's M.A. in Bible is the essence of it, and they teach you some leadership things as well, right? But uh, someone's asking what the M.A. is in. I didn't get an M.A. in apologetics. But then I was out of school, and the crazy thing is, another door opened for me to go to Talbot uh, School of Theology. And I didn't think I was going to qualify because this was a doctoral program. Now, it wasn't a PhD. It's doctoral ministry, but it's post-grad, right? Well, I did. And I had to do some stuff to get what's called an equivalency. It's a long story, but I had to take some more classes, including my Greek class and things like that. And uh, I, actually, I took enough classes to get me pretty close to an MDiv if I want to go back and get the MDiv, which is a, a higher degree than the, the MA. It's like a 90-hour credit degree. But I did the, the residency work at Talbot. So I would go there two weeks out of the year, uh, be resident, but then all the stuff was done from afar. A very wonderful experience. That's where I met Jeff Cran. I was hanging out with L.A. and it was really establishing. Hey, Rusty, you just subscribed. Shout out to you. I was really um, making some great friends with people in California. But things in my walk with the Lord and personal life were really challenged. And at the end of the day, I've got to take responsibility for that. So I had to drop out. Now, it's, it's, it has to do really with a number of things. It has to do with money. It has to do with time. But at the end of the day, like, I had to, I had to like, be like, all right. Uh, and, and, and then I didn't always want to do it. So sometimes uh, I got encouragement and sometimes people were like, hey, this is what you need to do. You know, and uh, I'm thankful for that looking back, even though it was not easy. Uh, and sometimes you wonder if we ever heal from stuff like that. And, you know, your self-inflicted wounds, basically. But the Lord was good nonetheless. And so here I am, not in Talbot, but right before we had to choose our project, because I was at the end of my residency. The next thing you do is your project. It usually takes three years. I was debating, and I had two that I wrote down when he mentioned it. Islam or Hebrewism, and they were specific. One was dealing with because um, it needs to be original in some way, <clears throat> dealing with a problem. One was about evangelism and apologetics to Muslims in a North American context, and especially um, looking at the rightfulness of certain techniques and methods in regards to evangelism to Muslims, because that's what I was involved with at the time heavily, and I wasn't involved with Hebrew Israelites as heavily, right? But I knew it was important, and I said, Lord, I'm involved with the Islam stuff, and I could do this, and this would help me and our community. 
but I feel this pull to do something different that I'm not actually involved with very heavily right now, which is dealing with Hebrew Islamism and helping pastors and local leaders know how to deal with it. And I tossed and turned and whatever, whatever. And at the end of the day, it was like, you need to do something that's not served well. Okay. And that had to do with Hebrew Islamism. So I submitted it. They made some tweaks, but they said yes. And we were on our merry way. And you know me, the second it was okay, I didn't even care about where I got the funding. I went crazy on buying books in relationship to this. And after doing this from like about this January till about maybe March, May of all this writing and reading, um, I was still working with Apology a lot at that time. And uh, I forget how the conversation went, but I basically told them, hey, guys, I've got enough now to where I feel comfortable talking about the Hebrew Israelites. And I've heard that they've been asking you guys stuff. If you're ever interested, let's do this. But I don't remember if they asked me. I don't remember if we it was like casual or how it exactly worked. I really don't. But they knew where I was at, and we had worked together on pro-life stuff and whatnot. So they said, hey, come on, and let's do this. And so May of 2015, maybe June of 2015, I think it's May of 2015, they had me on to talk about Hebrew Islamism. And, uh, you know, I was still learning in my knowledge at the time, or we always are. But that interview blew up in a lot of ways. And it was like, whoa. And it really just took off from there, from May 2015, because that was the first kind of public thing most people knew about. And now who we are now, five years later, it's hard to believe. Whoa. Jeez. And in the meantime, I got the right, done a lot of stuff online. And now what we need to do is... Cut out some time in the 24-hour pie for writing. That's an interesting comment. I don't even know what that means, but for some reason I kind of like it. Unser Land says, this stream is a cigarette. I almost want you to explain that, but another way I almost don't want you to explain that. But I'm with it, bro. <laughs> Whatever that means, bro. I don't even know. <clears throat> so, uh, everyone got to understand, I'm not talking about not doing Hebrew Islamism. I feel called to that as long as the Lord has me in that. Now, I've been wrong before. I thought I was going to do stuff relating to Islam for the rest of my life at one point. Uh, but then prior to that, I thought I was going to be doing stuff related to Mormonism and atheism and Jehovah's Witnesses and other points. I don't know the future. Oh, I try to be obedient in those ways. I try and pay attention to what's popping and going. But there's a long-term commitment here, right? And so that's where the book writing comes in. Now, I want to show you some other things I've done, again, to show you I've tried to be productive, and I've tried to, to make use of time. Now, we fail, but I've been productive. A book is like an album. You spend the time on it, and you release it, and there it is. I put out a lot of albums. I already showed you the tapes, and here are the CDs. Now, we're going back a little bit, back into the hip-hop days. But I'm trying to show you that I, by God's grace, I'm going to complete things. By God's grace. This is from 2003. See that? 2003. Look at the back cover. Shalom. Uh-oh, he's the Hebrews light. <laughs> but uh, that was, that was uh, the Notepad Nomad CD. And after that, I dropped Happy Hardcore. 2005. Happy Hardcore. All right. Get it, cab, vocab, black and white, yellow. Out there in Tempe. Chilling, chilling. Oh, ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da 2005. Then the next album, Active Listening. You know, these things take a while. In uh, October 06. You know what's interesting? I think it was released in 2007, though. This album got me in a book. Check this out. Global Media, Culture, and Identity. Theory, Cases, and Approaches. Can you believe that I actually was featured in a book... <laughs> Because of the song called Paisan on that album I just showed you. Look at the name of this chapter. The Mediascape of Hip Wop. Alterity and Authenticity in Italian American Hip Hop by Joseph Scoria. I kid you not. I'm going to turn here in this book. It's published by Rutledge. <laughs> they actually quote, quote some of my lyrics and stuff. It's the most bizarre thing. I never would have thought, right? <laughs> this is all from the MySpace days. But look. <sighs> In Paisan, oh, wait, let me see. Hold on. can you read it? Uh, huh. 
in Paisan, Vocab Malone of Phoenix, a self-proclaimed Christian rapper, his MySpace profile states that he is the Donny Osmond for the hip-hop generation, the Italian underground version of Will Smith, goads producers of mob imagery, and then he quotes some of my lyrics. <laughs> Showing our people as evil, a equal, Godfather dawns and a regal living illegal, movies are fecal, matter that don't matter, instead of watching an actor, you should read another chapter, my name's not Guido, Dago, Luigi, I don't say Ayo, like a box of Rocky, not Pavarotti, you're so, you know, family. Uh, so that, <laughs> anyways. And you know, in the meantime, uh, I try to do a lot of Unity things as well. I'll show you those. But this is the last album I put out. It's called The Columbus Connection. So I worked with all the homies from Ohio. So you get it, the map there. Uh, Smooth was the main one I worked with there. Columbus Connection mixtape. This is a really good album. This is the last one I did. What year did that come out on? Uh, 2009. Wow. And that's the last official kind of product I did like that. But I also would do all these local compilations. So the first Arizona Christian hip-hop compilation called A Point on the Map. Hey, everybody over here now. Hi, everybody over there. Wherever you are, wherever you're at. From Phoenix, Arizona, your point on the map. And I had the first song on there. Let's see, what kind of point on the map. And a couple other ones I was involved with. This one was mainly rockers, but they put a song of mine on there. And then one called UAE. Hey, thank you, Jonathan Green. Thank you, brother. Wait a minute. I mean, what's going on with the sound here? Um, oh, anyways. Uh, where am I on here? Where am I on here? Oh, there I am. See on the corner of the black Adidas hat doing the winky face? <laughs> and there's Pastor Gabe actually right underneath me. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Some of you guys do. Pastor Gabe's right underneath there. There's Verbs. He had a song on there. Anyways, so these are different things, right? And then... Oh. You know, I got featured in a couple of local, you know, underground hip hop magazines. There's a secular one. This is a Christian one. You know, you know, Pokemon, blah blah blah. These are little underground joints. Here's another one. You know, Underground AZ. They did a review of my album in there. And then it was crazy. I started making enough noise in the local scene that I got featured in actually a couple, believe it or not, more well known magazines. I, I'm actually mentioned. In here, um, it's kind of a long story, but Herb Magazine, you used to see this back in the day on the shelves. Uh, that, that was crazy, right? But, uh, and another example of a secular uh, engagement was, uh, oh, wait, this, uh, this is an article. I, I put it all on, you know, kind of laminated it, you know, but, uh, from the New Times. Uh, there's me, with RBD, Gabe, and there's my CDs for sale. See, them? you can't really see them. But, and then there's uh, me going out in the streets. This is like a big article back in the day, you know. It was a big thing. Uh, the cover was super weird. Jesus Christ, rap superstar or whatever. Right? I'm not going to show all that. And uh, some of the old hip-hop flyers, you know, that I did, I was involved with. Pretty cool things. We did this thing. I invented it, I guess, called Reverse Battle, where instead of dissing the person, you complimented them. But then I started transitioning, as I mentioned before, into apologetics, and now I'm writing articles, Spirituality and Modern Hip Hop. I wrote for the Christian Research Journal, Hank Hanegraaff's joint. Uh, this article is online. You can read it. I thought it was turned out very well. You know, Check this out. Spirituality, modern hip hop, the theology, Kendall Lamar, Chance the Rapper by Book Have Malone. And now, even in a UK magazine, uh, this is uh, just came out last month or two months ago, Premier Christianity magazine. Yes, Steve Harvey's on the cover. And I did a thing on uh, Forgotten Figures of Black Church uh, Christian History. They call it uh, Eight Figures, Eight Church History Figures that Time, Inspiring Christians History Forgot. And they did these really cool illustrations. But I actually, this is a beautiful article, the way they illustrated it. And, uh, you know, cover some brothers and sisters that, that are important for everybody to know. My point by saying all that is, okay, is that by God's grace, through all my flaws and wasted time and all this stuff, God has been good. And if he continues to have grace, grace, grace on me, 
um, I'm going to complete this stuff, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. I hope I pray, right? You never really know, okay? Hey, thank you, Liza. She put the article link up there. That's really cool. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I'm trying to... Uh, yeah, that did say Flavo. <laughs> no one from Delaware? Anybody from Delaware? Now, here we are now, you know, we all get older and slower, and some of us get dumber. Hey, DJ Next, quoting the old raps. DJ Next was the DJ for a while. We did some great shows together. My rhymes explode and they blow the whole globe. For your shoe, I'm a shiak, now I'm ready to reload. Click, click, boom, bip, unlock, pop a shot. Phoenix, Arizona, in a spot, now make it hot. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. If the question is the shows, then I'll tell you we got plenty. That's what. He's quoting there. <laughs> DJ Nicks. Yes, I was a skinny boy, and yes, I used to look different back then. Too much pasta doesn't do you good. You know? Lord, help me. So St. Dennis says you'll be back in a couple months. So here's what I plan on doing by God's grace. So I'm showing you where we are now. Just trying to give you a sense of the journey. Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And now what I'm going to try to do here is... Uh, if you don't change anything, nothing's going to change, right? If I expect to keep the same schedule, the same priorities, doing the same activities, and I'm not writing, then however will I end up writing, right? Shut up, Brian Lewis. Uh, so subbed. So look, man. Writing matters, and I got to do it. So, yo. I pray some of y'all will stick and stand with this as we do this and understand it. But I'm going to try to delete the apps. And when I do that, don't get mad if I don't respond. It's because I'm, I'm not in there. I've really got to focus, man. Nick P says, how can we get your old music? A lot of it's on iTunes. Some of it's on Amazon Prime. You got to search under different names. So you got to sometimes put vocab and Cree one. All of it's not available. And so I've made some of the archive stuff available to only Patreon people. And I'm going to keep on doing that. I just found some old archives on an old... Um, uh, hard drive actually the other day one of these external hard drives uh i gotta put up some more music for you guys but uh so ooh, that's bad i'm so sorry i'm gonna still be you know uh trying to do what they asked me to do here around phoenix arizona i do what i can you know so i still gotta try to be Good dad as much as I can, right? Uh, I got to do all that. Uh, I got to work this job. You know, there's a lot of stuff I procrastinate on. But my point is, God's been very faithful. You see this stuff. Let's try to do more. And that includes this. So to do that, I can't be putting out these live streams all the time. I can't be uh, responding to everything. And I don't need your guys' help during that time. And I, I honestly, I'm thinking on the longer side. I want to say two months. I don't know about that, man. I am thinking more like four months. I don't know. Now, we'll see. Okay? Think, so many things can change, okay? So many things can change. Uh, the idea is, you know, come back after that, right? And, and do different stuff, right? Yeah, that's right, man. Uh, you know, they say the definition of insanity, you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, you know? So look, I don't know what the Lord has, you know, practical application, because everything ain't about anybody, right? It's about the Lord. Where are you at in your life? You know, what's been happening with you thus far? What has the Lord done with you thus far? Because it's really all Him. What does He still want you to do? What does He still want you want to, what does He want you to do? You know, if you're a believer listening to this, He does not want you just to be an average run-of-the-mill church attender or live stream watcher. He wants you to be serving people in some way. And I don't know the way you're called to serve people. Everyone's not supposed to be behind this microphone. Sometimes I wonder if I am, you know. But what is it the Lord wants you to do? You know, 
you can get a sense if you pray about it and you move in wisdom and you talk to people and then, you know, try to take those steps to do what you got to do and go out there and be bold, no matter your age, go out there and take steps. And if you've got to change some things, if things need to change for this to happen, do it, do it. Eddie Vasquez says, what if I don't know what I'm called to do? Well, check this out. Eddie, you know a great place to start. Let me say this. Look up the word, the phrase, will of God in the Bible, and you're going to find a number of places where the term will of God is going to appear in the Scripture. And I would actually start with those places where it says, here's the will of God for you. And then ask yourself, are you doing those things that says the will of God? Because it's the will of God for all believers, so you can't go wrong there. And if you're not, find out what the Lord needs to have you do different so you can do the will of God according to Scripture. That's, that's the first thing I'd say. Another thing I want to say is this, Eddie. Check this out. Where are you right now? So you're not on Mars. You're not an alien. You're in a very real context. And you need to look around for your context, Eddie. Don't think about moving. Don't, don't, don't have these fancy dreams of everyone looking at you. Just look around your context. Because guess what? The Bible says, love the Lord your God with heart. Or love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. And second greatest command, love your neighbor as yourself. And ask yourself, what is the way in my context God wants me to best love my neighbor? So I would actually say, where are you? If you're at a church that since the pandemic hit, but so let's say they're still meeting, and they need someone to teach the fifth graders, but you don't want to teach the fifth graders, you know what the first thing you need to probably do? This is my view. You need to go teach those fifth graders. And if you're faithful in what needs you see directly around you, guess what's going to happen? God is going to open up other doors for you. And you may not want to do something, but that doesn't mean you're not supposed to do it. So I think it's a little bit more, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's all mystical. You know, look for a, you know, a spider to fall at a certain time, you know, and, and uh, look for the, the doorbell to ring at 2 a.m., you know, like some kind of weird signs we look for. You know, look for the phrase, will of God in the Bible, and then ask yourself, how can I love my neighbor? And I, I and maybe it is doing uh, soup kitchens and turkey stuff, you know, but you need to figure out what your context is and see where you are right now, because wherever that is, according to Paul and it's according to Scripture, God has sovereignly placed everyone in those times and places they are. So look directly around and see what the needs are. Now you may look around and realize the greatest need is f f in somewhere else. It may be something you didn't expect. It may be a family member who has recently sustained a massive injury, and they live. In uh, Iowa, but no one's there to care for them. Maybe you're the person, you're the one person in the family who could pull it off. You need to move to Iowa, and I, I'm, I'm serious. And may, you may never get credit for that. You may never, no one ever may know. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Very practical, very basic. You look around and then you make those moves, and you, and you don't care what anyone says. I don't mean you don't look for wisdom because you're trying to ask for wisdom right now, and God will make it clear. You teach that fifth grade class, God's going to make it clear what the next step will be. And you will never know where you end up, but you've got to be faithful in those things. Okay? You've got to. If not, don't really expect the Lord ever to ever use you if you're not going to be willing to do those, those things that you don't want to do, that you realize need to be done in whatever context you're in. Um, you know? And... Uh, that you'll have a fulfilled life if you do that. If you do that, you'll have a fulfilled life, and you'll look back and you. I think we'll always have regret to an extent because we're sinners, but you will not have the same kind of regret that um, that someone who never was obedient to what the Lord had them do. You you have a different sense of satisfaction. You know, trust me on this. You don't know where you're going to go. Everyone listening, none of us know anything. And I don't really mean that. We know God is real. We know, you see what I'm saying? But you got to figure out what that is, man. And uh, it, it'll become very, it'll become, it'll become very, very clear. Arlen3 says, I don't like hip-hop. I love your Christian hop. Go on tour. Well, I didn't mention this, but I went on tour. During my heyday, I went on tour a number of times, and it was beautiful. And uh, I'm so glad I did it. And it was a big risk, and uh, it was crazy. And I was not really a big enough artist to pull it off, but it really happened. And uh, I did, you know, local things, Southwest, but then I actually did stuff all the way to New York and Pennsylvania. I went from Phoenix all the way to PA for, for one of the tours. And I did a couple, I met so many amazing people. Uh, you know, I love the world from what I know of it. 
but man, the United States, yes, there's errors and falls, but the United States is a beautiful country. And I'm glad I didn't get to see everything. I didn't get to go to North Dakota or South Dakota, but I got to go to so many places and it's beautiful. I got to see what people are doing in, in Oklahoma for the Lord. I got to see what people are doing in Amarillo. I got to see so many amazing things. You know what I'm saying? Eddie says, I kind of just leave tracks and give tracks to random people. Okay, that's good. So you have an evangelistic heart. Hey, Paul P., thank you. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. He says, uh, Vocab once told us to, 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 to see what's going on with Christians in Nigeria. I did, and now I'm a giver and supporter for the Barnabas Fund. That's amazing, brother. Praise God. I can't put your comment on the screen. I don't know why it's not showing, but I just saw it just now, and that's a great comment, Paul P. Wow, praise God, man, for real. But it sounds like, uh, uh, Eddie, you need to find out this in community. So I'm glad you do that as an individual. But everything really is about community. Now, community is not easy. Okay, community is hard. But there needs to be community in your life in some way. And uh, maybe you go street witnessing. Maybe that's where your heart is. You know, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know where you live. But, but uh, that's a start. But um, you need to find out who's my community. If you don't have one, you, you, you need to be surrounding yourself with people and, and pouring into their life and, and whatever. Mercy people. That's fine. You don't. You, that's fine. Giving tracks is fine, but that's that's. Um, I think the Lord's going to want you to do more than that. That's beautiful. We need more people who give gospel tracks out. Okay, but Eddie, where's the community in your life? That's a big question you need to to ask. Where, where is the community? Okay, you live in L.A., but what I mean by community is who's in your life around you that's a believer that you need to link up with, because we're not supposed to do this walk isolated. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I think I've said what I need to say as far as that. I think you guys see where we are, and you guys have been beautiful today. Sorry about the little timeouts and whatnot. I'll talk to the squad again later. Check the channel. Some stuff's coming out. Uh, God is good. And uh, let's kick this off with a freestyle. I think we're good. A little bit different here thing. I know there's a lot of information. I know that you know I'm also sort of stream of consciousness, whatever it is. I know everyone's not into that. But let's look for a beat we haven't used yet. Nah. This is another just... Oh, okay. That's the beat right there. Obviously, this is all relevant now, so just cover that up. Y'all ready to do a freestyle? So go. So go with the beat. So go. Right now, drop it right down now. Drop it right now. Let me show you how. I, I. Drop it right now. I, I, I. Right now, yeah, yeah. Uh, drop it right now. Oh. Drop it right now. Black and white, like the spot on the cow. Keep it out now, spit that vow Vocat Malone, turn my head like an owl Ow, all the ladies say Hey ho, what you do today? I got the flow, it's an old school style Vocat Malone, pull the rhyme from a file Going way back, 90's the date Check this out, show my old school mixtape It was on cassette, can you believe it? Mic check what am I gonna do? One, two, three, four. Go on tour. Yes, in an old tour bus. Where I go from Columbus. Well, really not a bus. It was more like my car. Four tour us, not a superstar. Vocab Malone, where I am, there I are. Like R E M. Hardy, har, 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 gar, har, horrible, terrible, unbearable, blurrable. Focus, I'm from Columbus and I love Jesus. Here I come again, don't do no angel dust. Lust, gotta kill it. Here, a skillet. Yes, indeed, I got the flavor, I grill it. I reel it in like a fishing men. Vocab Malone, Italian, gotta win. Catch the W. Here I come again, God, I'm with that crew that is true. Ooh, honey child. Yes, indeed, when I. 
freestyle Back in the day I couldn't take it Lock myself inside my basement What's my placement? The bottom of the barrel Check it out now paint on my apparel Style not clean, not sterile What I do now kinda feral Meaning wild like a thundercat But I practiced and had the thunder raps Oh, now it's so vital My goal back then to take a title Take the rival, spank him Not even going to thank him Just gank him, not gonna win Peep this out now, me and my friends Running around, losing the brain Spray paint and grab all over the train We were so insane upon the tracks Then locked ourselves with the boom bat rap We had to practice acrobatics Check it out now, sitting on the mattress Writing the raps from the notebook Open up the Bible and take a look One, two, three, make it ease Yes, it's cold, you know that it freeze Open up the Bible, begin to read What do I see? Book of Ecclesiastes Oh, this is late 90s On the bed, the Bible, you will find the book that I'm reading ICR, pet decide now, I took a car Went to Phoenix, Arizona Fall like fall from home all alone, didn't know no one Peep this out now, your son Mama's gone, is he coming back? Nah, I don't know, but let me spit this rap Peep this Ooh, ooh, go out a mill avenue With the crew Let's do another beat For you Not that one We'll do this one, this one's dope We'll do this one. Last beat, y'all. <laughs> Going back. Yes, y'all. Speaking from Michael Jack, that's a fact. I got the rap. I'm Vocat Malone. I'm on the track. Going back in the day, like a mod used to say. Here I go again, not cash is clay. But I got to box ya, like the opera. Out cause a phantom, I'm a whopper. Like Burger King, I do my thing. Peep this if you're listening. The mic is shining, it's glistening. Gonna baptize it, christening. Like a Roman Catholic, I'm a Baptist. Grab the mic, begin to rap this. Plus a conservative, charismatic. Peep this for the mic, I'm an addict. Oh! How to be a disciple, how to drop that idol Hip-hop in the titles, my rival was my own heart Peep this out now, God dealt with John Mark Gave me the clay, what do I say? Back in the day, praise Yahweh Now we're grooving, now we moving Showcase some seeds, put my man John Rubin One, two, two to the three Go to Nashville, meet with Goatee Then AZ is the next type of stop Gotta keep it real, still doing hip hop on the black doctrine when I'm walking, rocking. Here I go again, sh sh socking. That's onomatopoeia, so like Sakaria. Here we go again, you just don't wanna see ya. Italian rapper, that's the factor. Read the Bible, plus the chapter, plus the verse. Kick the verse, make it dead like you in the hearse. The rhyme so sick, call the nurse. Yes, indeed, it's not perverse. I will not curse. I Will not cut, but explore this beat like it was Columbus. Got shaped like a rumbus. Here I come again, I'm a bum kid in the studio when I'm flipping the lid. Here I come again, now I'm doing the bid. Spiritually speaking, shout out to Puerto Ricans. Plus, it's out again, the homies will be freaking the beat like the club Atlanta. Here I come again, like my Lanta. Got the gift like Santa. Dim Christmas, shout out to Jehovah, not the witness. Witness protection, that's my selection Yes indeed, the resurrection That's what I'm living, that's what he's given Now I'm like a car, you say that I'm driven Mario and Dreddy, just like spaghetti Italian, now I am Confetti, spread, Hey, check it out 1999, 2K, now we're going on the beat 
vocab alone I will not cheat, this is not written down It's original, I'm a criminal Meaning spiritual, it's lyrical Individual, so here I go again Indivisible, God one nation Full salvation, sanctification Got to thank them, Jamaican, Haitian Even Asian, white to black You can call Caucasian The mic is hot, so the mic is blazing Whack MCs out the sun like a raisin Shriveled up like a nightmare Gotta stop the beat like right there Turn your radio up Street apologist, 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 street apologist